Okay, yes, class. Good evening. Am I audible? So, who all have joined? Asta, Ahmed. Ahmed, you were absent no, yesterday. Ahmed, this one. Yes, ma'am. Alan, Arjun. And Rehan said Ahmed. Rehan, right? Yes, ma'am. Your name is Rehan. No? Am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, yeah, ma'am. Okay, okay. So, this is your first class, no? Yes. Okay. So, see, class, yesterday we had started with uh, ray optics and we had completed, we had started basically with reflection. We couldn't complete any topic since EM waves only got over yesterday because okay, Zed is having internet issues. <laughs> All right, class. Now, see, uh, regarding uh, an incident ray, we discussed that three phenomena occurs over there. When the incident ray is incident on a surface, there your network is fine now. Are you able to hear? No, 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 yeah. Okay. So, when the incident ray strikes on a surface, three phenomena occur. One is that when the ray of light strikes, exact amount of light can get bounced back. And that phenomena is known as reflection. So reflection of light. One thing can happen is that the substance allows rays to get transmitted to itself. Some amount of rays just obliquely bend through it. Fine. That oblique bending of ray of light is known as refraction. So it is a type of transmission only. And it occurs through transparent substances. And how that occurs, we will discuss it later. Third phenomenon that is not a part of your syllabus, that is known as absorption. So absorption is there. So we started with the laws of reflection. I think we just completed till the laws only. So first law was angle of incidence was equal to angle of reflection. And all these three rays, the incident ray, the normal and the reflected, the reflected ray, all these rays will lie in the same plane only. It means if you are having an incident ray, a ray which is incident in the xy plane, then your normal perpendicular will be dropped in the xy plane only. Your reflected ray will occur in the xy plane only. It won't happen that you are getting it along the z axis or somewhere else. Fine. So these three will lie in the same plane. Angle of incidence becomes equal to angle of reflection. These two are the laws of reflection. Be clear because you will be having laws of refraction also. So for laws of refraction and laws of reflection, you should be clear about. Okay, now starting with spherical mirrors. In the case of reflection, we'll be dealing with mirrors only. All the types of mirrors that are present, we'll, we'll deal with mirrors only. Lenses we'll deal with in case of refraction. Now see what are actually spherical mirrors. Fine, understanding of the spherical mirrors is important. Suppose, let's say I have taken a glass piece. I have a glass piece with me, fine? This is a complete circular glass piece. It has a center. It has a rim. It has a, it will be having a radius and this is a complete glass piece. Just a second, give me a second. All right. Now, if I somehow using this curve, this is a proper circle in front of you. In, at any point, no, I'm just cutting it. Let's say at this point, I have cut this. Fine. Now, what will happen? From this fresh piece of glass, I have just cut a portion. This portion, I have cut along. From here, I have cut it. Now, what will happen? I'll obtain bulge. Just a bulge, I'll obtain it. Suppose this kind of bulge I'll obtain. If I just take this portion, it's, it will be just a bulge for me that I'll obtain. Now what I'm doing, using polish, using silver, I am silvering the outermost surface, this bulged part. This is a curve. This bulged part, I'm silvering it. I'm polishing it. And I'm remaining and I'm letting this inner hollow part remain as it is. Fine. This bulged part, I'm silvering it. This inner part is remaining as it is. So it means this outermost bulged part, this has been now silvered. And this innermost part is left for reflection to occur or the light rays to strike basically. 
So when this occurs that the light rays are striking a surface, right? In the, within the hollow portion and the outermost part is silvered. Such a kind of mirror is known as a concave mirror, fine? Bulge will be silvered. Inner part will remain, inner hollow part will remain as it is unsilvered. And the light rays will directly strike over here. Now, the same, talking about that same glass piece, which I was referring to you. Now, talking about that glass piece only, if I have just this glass piece, I'm having it, and somehow I'm not silvering the innermost portion. And I'm not silvering the outermost bulge, but somehow I'm managing and I'm able to silver this. Silvering means polishing your applying a coating in order to opaque it, make it opaque and not let the light rays transmit through it, right? So this part, this part class, this part has been silvered now. So such a mirror that will be obtained, this is called as a convex mirror. Now light rays will strike here. This part has been silvered. Now light rays will like this. Light rays are coming from this tube light. Light rays are coming. They are striking off with this, this part. So how to identify? You have to identify by the silvering part. And in a normal mirror, you can see the silvering part is shown by the dotted lines. Whenever we have rough part or silvered part or polished part, that is shown through this. So these are the types of mirrors that we have and different, different images are obtained and different, different applications are there based upon this. Now, one more thing. This was just about the types of mirror. No, but some things, some basic things for this glass piece that we had, that will remain the same. For that glass piece, some things will remain the same. Both are actually a part of this hollow sphere. No. So some things that are present, let's discuss that first. What all things are there? What all things are essential whenever you deal with? Now, see, I'm not referring to a specific kind of mirror. I have just drawn this. I have just drawn this sphere. This is a normal hollow sphere for which, uh, to which the mirror was a part of. Fine. Now, see, if I have a spherical part, a center will be present, right? So here also, the center of this sphere will be present. This center, the center is known as center of curvature. These are all the landmarks for your ray diagrams and you will be using and referring these only. Like I'll tell you through the center of curvature, the ray of light will pass through or at a particular point that will be mentioned, right? So similarly here as well, you have to focus it on the terminologies. Based upon the terminologies, you will be having the reference points. So like this, this is the center of the mirror and this is known as the center of curvature. Now, it's a circle that has been drawn. So definitely a radius will be there. This radial part, this radius, this is known as radius of curvature. This is known as radius of curvature. Now, class, if I draw a parallel line or if somehow I manage to join the two diametrically opposite ends, let's say any two diametrically opposite ends, these two, these two, any two diametrically opposite, I'm just joining it. So there will be a line that will be passing through the center of curvature. This line is very important mark, very important for reference. And this is the first line that you'll be drawing. This is known as principal axis. This axis is known as principal axis. So it's a line which passes through the center of curvature and joins the two diametrically opposite ends of the hollow sphere to which the mirror was part of. Now, are you able to notice this intersection? This is the principal axis and this is the sphere part. There's an inter intersection at this point. This part is known as pole, pole of the mirror. This point, this is known as the pole of the mirror. Fine, this is the pole. It's also a reference po ref point only where you are able to identify and locate certain things, fine? So this was the radius of curvature. 
we'll be using this radius of curvature, not definitely not this, because this is at certain inclination. We'll be using this only. Now see, where the all the rays of light know, they'll converge at a point or they'll intersect at a point coming from infinity or a far away distance. All the rays of light will meet at a point. That point of where actual image formation occurs. Even not necessarily every point will be this, but for in general, if you have this point, the light rays, if they are coming from infinity, and if the light rays are parallel to the principal axis, they will definitely converge at a point. And that point, this is known as the focus of the mirror. Fine, focus. So if images, light rays are coming from infinity, let's say sun rays are coming. From infinity, it comes... They're always parallel to principal axis and they'll meet at a point. You will see a point where the rays of light are moving or image of sun is formed. Image of sun, you can say, or a small dot, shiny dot is formed. You can easily identify this is the focus reason because here the light rays are meeting. They are converging at this point. Now, every distance class, this is measured with respect to pole. Please remember this pole. That's why pole has a significance. Otherwise, this intersection was of no use to us. Why would have been, we been studying it? Because pole is the reference point. From the pole, you have to start your motion of calculation. If an object is also present, if anything is present, be it behind the mirror, be it in front of the mirror, wherever you have to start your motion from pole. This is, all, this is necessary by the definition as well because you have to abide by the definitions of all the physical quantities. Also, you have sign conventions to be followed. And for sign conventions to be followed, you have to have certain criteria for which all of us are able to use the same sign convention. Otherwise, what would have happened? Rehan would have been using something else. Ahmed would have been using something else. Aryan would have been something using else. All of them will be having the same magnitude, but some will be having positive, one is having negative, like this. So we have to have a standardized sign convention. Otherwise, because see, this is not, nothing is in motion right now. The way in relative velocities and your motion in straight line, we use sign conventions for you, something else, for me, something else. Downward positive for you, upwards positive for me, like this. But here, nothing is in motion. You have to have a standardized so that's why you have to take the reference point as the pole of the mirror. Now, from the pole measure everything. From the pole measure the center of curvature's distance, that is radius of curvature. From the pole only measure this distance. So the distance between the pole and the focus, this is known as the focal length. Focal length. Length between the pole of the mirror and the focus. This is known as the focal length. Now, one more thing, class. Uh, supposedly, I have marked a cut over here. Let's say this is A point. This is B point. This will be the mirror that will be obtained, right? Depends upon which side is available for the rays of light to fall on it. Now, C class, two apertures you have to understand. And these are just for definition. You don't have so much of use to them. Also, these terminologies, nobody will be asking you. You don't have to write the definition of it. This is just for your understanding. How the questions come, that we'll keep on discussing side by side. Now see, suppose I have this curved part with me. One aperture, there are two apertures that you will study. One aperture is this direct aperture. This just distance between the curve. If this is the curve, this separation. This is known as the linear aperture. Fine? Direct aperture, this part, which is allowing the rays of light to enter. This is known as the linear aperture. One part, one aperture is this aperture, right? This, this part, this is one aperture from where all the light rays will strike on it. So this aperture, this is known as the angular aperture. This aperture, this is known as the angular aperture. So two apertures are here. there. Linear aperture means this. This is the linear aperture. This. Linear aperture. This part. That has been calculated. You can calculate it. Otherwise, is this angular aperture. Because this subtends an angle somewhere. So two types of apertures you have. Linear aperture and angular aperture. 
just remembering the term aperture is enough for you because you will be using aperture only you will not be mentioning anywhere but if i talk about the direct length ab that is linear aperture and when we obtain this curve a p b when this curve curve is obtained that is known as angular aperture this is known as angular aperture so these are some basic terminologies i think now all the terminologies we have already discussed focus is there center of curvature is there radius of curvature is there apertures we have discussed pole of mirror we have discussed principal axis we have discussed now some sign conventions are there which are yet to be discussed but first copy it down till here both the points about the mirrors and the terminologies then we'll see sign conventions because sign convention we have to do it in the beginning so till here you all had written it yesterday from here you have to write it now okay write it down any doubts you have you can text me in the chat box you can directly ask me
Okay, now coming to the sign conventions. See, this is uh, an example of concave mirror that I have taken by these rough images now that has been depicted. It is just showing that this has been silvered so that you are able to identify because by looking at the shape, you cannot. A convex mirror can also be kept in this form. A concave mirror can also be kept in this form. So you have to identify by the surface it, which it is striking. This shape, this concavity is known as the concave mirror. Fine. Now see regarding the sign conventions. Let's say in front of the mirror, I have kept an object. This is object A, B that has been kept. So from the pole of the mirror, you will measure this distance and that will be known as the object distance. Fine, object distance, usually donated, uh, denoted by U. Now see what will happen. Incident rays direction is what? Incident ray is striking the mirror, no. So from infinity, from anywhere in space, the light rays are striking of this mirror. So this becomes a direction of incident ray. Now remember, all the distances that are taken in the direction of incident ray, those are said to be positive. And all the directions that are in opposite, that are taken opposite to the incident ray, those are negative, simply. Like if I talk about this object, this is the direction, direction of incident ray. From the mirror, I'll begin my motion to calculate the distance. So this is pointing towards the left side, while incident ray is towards the right side. It means object distance will be negative. So it's better now instead of one thing you remember, if you remember what's the direction, first you figure out what's the direction of incident ray. Then you analyze and identify what is the object distance whether it's positive, negative. It's better if you remember in such a manner. Anything that is kept in front of the mirror, it will be negative. Anything that is kept behind the mirror, definitely you cannot keep an object behind the mirror because no image will be formed. But sometimes it happens, no images are also formed behind the mirror. Focal length of some mirrors are um, behind it. So whenever any focus, anything that is kept behind the mirror, that will be positive. Anything in front of the mirror, be it an image, be it an object, anything that is present, it will always be negative. This way you can remember, I think it will become easier for you to learn. But for your knowledge, for, for the reason, for understanding the reason behind it, incident ray will what happen? You have to remember it. Why this is all this has been taken by the direction of incident ray. Find whatever is the direction of incident ray according to that it has been taken. If a ray is a long incident ray, these are positive. If it is opposite, then it is taken as negative. But for your understanding, no, because you will not be having so much of time to analyze all these things. So remember, think anything kept in front of the mirror, negative. Anything kept behind the mirror, positive. Also, this was just no positive, negative uh, regarding the object and image distance, focal length, radius of curvature. All these things you have to keep in mind, not only the uh, radius uh, object distance, Object distance, image distance, radius of curvature, focal length, all these things you have to keep in mind. Now, anything that is formed above the principal axis and perpendicular to it, like this object, this object is kept perpendicular to the principal axis, like this it has been kept. This is the principal axis and it has been kept straight away like this. So anything that is kept in above it, that is taken as positive, and any distance that is kept below it, that is known as negative. Many a times you will be facing images that are formed inverted. So what you will do? It means you will use a negative sign. That negative sign will indicate all the complete information. And you will be having other things as well. Magnification you have. There are certain other things that we'll discuss later on. But firstly, you have to understand this part only. That incident ray is there. So height of object will always be positive. Height of image depends. If it is formed below the principal axis, it will be negative. If it is formed above the principal axis, it will be positive. Yes, yes, images are formed behind the mirror and inverted. 
Yes, correct. Inverted also as well as behind the mirrors. That cases we will do and you will analyze. Images are formed behind the mirror also. Images are formed inverted also. Images are formed real also. What you have to be sure about is the object. Object will always be negative and height of object will always be positive because how can you keep it below the principal axis? You'll always keep it in front of it. Right. So these are certain determining factors for your uh, sign convention. I have the points written. Let me read it out for you. So at whichever point you are having difficulty, you're not able to understand, just stop me right away. I'm reading all these theoretical points. So first point says all ray diagrams are drawn with the incident light traveling from the left to the right. Fine. Then it says all the directions are measured from the pole. You have to have the pole as the standardized point starting point. All distances measured in the direction of incident light are positive. It means anything found behind the mirror is positive. All the distances measured in opposite direction of incident light are negative. It means anything that is kept in front of the mirror. And heights measured upwards and perpendicular to the principal axis positive. And heights measured downwards and perpendicular to principal axis as negative. Note these down. So any difficulties you have, let me know. Uh, Rayan, uh, just let me know one thing. In your school, what was the physics lesson that was going in your school or that is currently going in your school? Uh, wave optics. Wave optics, sorry. Uh, uh, yes, Asta. Ma'am, even B is also there. No? We have Ma'am Dio, that's the object. This yes, yes, like... image distance will be there, focus and that. And this was just, I was taking example. When I'll do mirror formula, no, then I'll explain this back. How to take image and object distance, fine. Yes, ma'am.
Mom, go to school. Yes, mom, then. Done, ma'am. Now, there are certain rules for drawing ray diagrams. Four rules are there. Those four, four rules are very basic. We'll be repeating those rules only for drawing the main ray diagrams, so for your concave mirror or your convex mirror. We'll be using these four rules only, and moreover, only three rules will get utilized. Let me show you. Let's say if any ray a ray of light is there and this ray of light, if it is parallel to the principal axis and comes from a farther point, let's say from infinity this arises, any case you witness such a case, then always the ray of light passes through the focus. It will pass through the focus. So if you have an object at infinity, your image will be formed here at the focus, at this point. 
let's reverse this. Let's say instead of the light ray that was falling from infinity and striking and passing through the focus, <laughs> let's say the ray of light is now incident and passing through the focus first. So if you encounter such a case when light ray it passes through the focus, then opposite thing will happen. It means the light ray will now be parallel as it moves. This ray will be parallel as it will keep on moving. This is what is the first or second rule you can say. But basically, it's like vice versa. The rule has just been interchanged. Where you had focus, so here you will be having your object at the focus and somewhere at the infinity, your image will be formed. So this is one case. Now, any ray of light that passes through center of curvature, it will retrace its exact path the way it has arrived. Principle of reversibility. Remember, yesterday we did principle of reversibility. In that we didn't, didn't we see the fact that if you have ray of light that is, and somehow if you reverse the path of light, it retraces its path exactly. So same thing here also for center of curvature also. If you have for center of curvature, ray of light is passing. Then once it will strike, after striking this, it will bounce back and retrace its exact center of curvature's path through which it had arrived it. So it retraces the exact path. So these rules are essential. These rules are necessary. One last rule that will be least utilized by us for the calculations. If a ray of light directly strikes at the pole, like this, then laws of reflection we did. No, yesterday laws of reflection we had studied. If this is striking it, it means this is your incident ray. This is angle of incidence. Not this exactly. If you will draw the normal, you will see angle of incidence is this. This is not angle of incidence. This is the angle that is formed by the mirror. Now see, normal, if you drop a normal at this surface, the normal will somewhat be here only across the principal axis. Because principal axis is crossing it. This is the mirror. This is the principal axis. So this angle will be somewhat 90 degree only. That's why we are choosing this angle of incidence. This is a normal now. This is angle of incidence. Now what will happen? When the ray of light will move, it follows laws of reflection. It means this angle becomes angle of reflection and angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So this follows both the laws of reflection. So if when this is the case, when the incident ray is directly incident at the pole, then this happens. Otherwise, rest of the two points that we had discussed above, there was just copy it quickly, then we'll see how the images are formed in a concave mirror.
done till here? Any doubts till here? Is it here? Are you all fine till here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Jeeva, do you clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, Zed, have you written? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, now, let's see the image formations by the concave mirror first. Let's see. Convex, you have very little. Convex lens is more important to you. Now, see formation of images by the concave mirror. Now, we are keeping the object beyond C. Beyond C means I am keeping the object anywhere here. Let's say AB, this is the object. Now, the light rays will obey the laws and the procedures of it. So, one ray will be parallel to it and it will pass through the focus. And the other ray of light, this will retrace its path from the center of curvature. This intersection where there's an intersection that has been obtained by both the rays. This part, this is A dash, this is B dash. Why I'm writing dash? These just primes will indicate that this is image, not the object, fine? So this was the object, this ha image has been obtained. Now, what type of image has been obtained? See, object was kept beyond C. Image that was obtained was between center of curvature and the focus. So between C and F, you have your image that has been obtained. Also, Im image is diminished. Diminished means it is comparatively smaller than the object. Object is larger also that you can see from the image from this screen also a b is your object a dash b dash is your image and it's a real image why real image yesterday only i have told you that whenever you have actual lines intersecting that point of intersection that point of cross section that is known as a real image if somehow you are extending it and somehow you are producing it and the lines are appearing to me they're not actually meeting that is a virtual image but when the actual rays of light meet at a point, that gives you real image. And obviously, you can say AB was kept. Now you are obtaining A dash B dash. It means image has been has now been inverted. So image is now inverted image. So between C and F, diminished, real, and inverted. This is beyond C. Now let's move it a little further. Let's keep it at the center of pervasion. Let's keep it, it exactly at the center of curvature. This is AB. I'm keeping it exactly at the center of curvature. One ray parallel. See, when you'll be drawing it in your exams, ensure you have proper scale with you because without proper scale, the drawings become difficult to get through it. Here for today's class in your rough notebooks, you can, but for your main exam, please have it. Please have the scale with you, proper scale, have the proper scale with you. Here at this intersection, I'm obtaining A dash, B dash. Now see what all things you can notice. Firstly, this ray light went here, it crossed. Then this ray went here and it became parallel. Now what all are the possible things? At the center of curvature was the object. At the center of curvature only, no, it's not image. So image is obtained at C. At the center of curvature only you obtain the image. And uh, regarding the size of image, it is neither diminished nor enlarged. It is exactly of the same size as that of the object that has been formed. As you can even see in the ray diagram over here. 
So image is of same size. Now, yes, class, you tell me what type of image is it? Real, inverted, virtual, erect, according to you by looking at the ray diagram. Real. Real, definitely good, Z. It is real because the line, the rays of light are actually intersecting. And erect or inverted? Erect. No. See, image is inverted. How to identify erect and inverted is here it was AB. We are not obtaining AB like this that we can see it is real. Image is now exact replica of it, but inverted. Where you were having B point, now it is having some B dash. Where A was there, you are having nothing. A is A dash is here. Do you get the difference? Real, erect, and Okay, erect and inverted. So this is inverted. For uh, erect, you have to have the exact image. Head to head, tail to tail, fine? So this is uh, inverted. Let's bring the object now a little more closer to the mirror. This was exactly at the center of curvature. Let's push it and bring it somewhere between center of curvature and the focus. Between C and F, it means somewhere here. This is A, B. This is at the center of curvature. And again, the ray of light will pass through the center of curvature. It will retrace its path exactly the way it had covered. Just me this direction. So this, let's say this is the object. Now see here I am obtaining the image. This is, this is B dash here. This is A dash over here. Some conclusions for the image. Where is the image formed? When the object is kept between F and C, image is formed beyond C. Remember opposite is happening. When we had our object beyond C, image was formed at this point. Now when we are keeping our object at this point, we are obtaining image at the point that was previously given. So this point, A dash, B dash, where you are obtaining the image, this is beyond C. So when your image object was kept between focus and center of curvature, image is formed beyond C. Any other details you can see regarding the size? Yes, Z. Large. Large. Large, large. Good. Enlarged image. This is not diminished now. This is enlarged image. So only Z is able to notice this fact. Yes, others, any other observation? Uh, inverted. Inverted. inverted, inverted, real and inverted, perfect Z. See, image is now inverted. So this is a real image because lines are intersecting and this will be inverted. So this is the case. Uh, now let's push object a little more further. Not at focus because we know if you keep object at focus, image will be formed at infinity. If you keep image at inf object at infinity, image will be formed at focus. These two points that we had already discussed, I'm not repeating it over here. A little more. It means between the focus and the pole. Here. Between the focus and the pole. Somewhere here. Now let's see. See, a ray of light will be parallel to this. This ray of light, once it will be parallel, it will pass through the focus. If you have it, it this will definitely pass through the focus. So here it will pass through the focus. Second ray of light will pass through the center of curvature, like this. Now see, no intersection, 
the light rays aren't intersecting and they are not even parallel that I can say the image will be formed at infinity. So one thing we are sure we need to produce it and let's see, are they appearing to meet at any point? I am extending it and I'm extending this. Somewhere at this point, they'll appear to meet. They'll appear to meet. They're not actually intersecting that I agree. So this is A dash, B dash. Some new conclusions. First, the image will be found behind the mirror. Image will be found behind the mirror. Now your observations class. Uh, enlarged and inverted. Uh, sorry, uh, erected. Erect, erect. And regarding the nature, yes, ML. Will it be virtual? Virtual, perfect. Because light rays were not actually meeting. They are appearing to meet it at a point. So yes, good all of you, especially Zed and Emma, this is enlarged because the size is greater. It is exactly formed the way it is. A, so A is there. B, so B is there. So this is not inverted. That is, this is erect and virtual because light rays are actually not meeting. So this part now comes in your theory as well, that uh, which, uh, what is the play, is object placement to be done when the image that uh, has to be obtained is virtual for a concave mirror. So in that case, you have to mention between the focus and pole, because if you have it between focus and pole, then only you'll get a virtual image. Otherwise, in all the cases we had seen, it was real and inverted, real and inverted everywhere. Fine. One image formation we have by convex mirror, why? Because for a convex mirror, no, everything lies behind the mirror. This we'll do, then the rest of the things you can copy it down. Formation of images by convex mirror. So principal axis, draw all these things. No, if possible, draw it here also with the help of scale. But in your exam, please have a scale with you. Otherwise, your trade, you will not be obtaining. If at the center of curvature, you want to obtain image, you will not be getting it there. Fine, we'll, have, we'll be having difficulties otherwise if we do not follow the proper scaling and angle. So that's why I prefer a scale with you. This is a convex mirror. Inner concavity has been silvered and the convexity is left for the uh, rays of light to pass. So center will be there, center of curvature, a focus will be there. This is radius of curvature. This is focal length. Object can be kept anywhere. Anywhere, no, in front of the mirror. Object distance can be anywhere in front of the mirror because you do not have any landmarks for it. No landmarkings are there. So object is kept, a kept anywhere in front of the mirror. Let's say this is a B object. Now, will the light rays actually meet behind the mirror? Even if you have a ray of light going through it, it will pass through the focus like this. This is how you obtain images for convex. There are, that's why we have continuously, we have uh, for, um, convex mirror we have continuously virtual images that are formed because images do not meet how can the image meet how can the ray of light meet behind the mirror after it has been silvered so here even if it is parallel it will go it will pass through the focus but in this manner where you have to produce it fine even if you have to drop a ray of light now that is passing through the center of curvature so like this you will draw it like this. It will retrace its path. Now, where image will be formed? Image is formed here. Do you notice? This is A dash. This is B. So, image will formed. Image that will be formed will be behind the mirror. Object is uh, in front of mirror. Ma'am, uh, do uh, convex mirror uh, not produce uh, real images? No, convex mirrors do not. Concave mirror can, convex cannot. Convex cannot. Because 
the main part where you could get the image has been silvered and the details all the landmarks are there only so that's why how can you obtain the image that's why we do not have it for convex mirror for k and concave we have but for convex we have virtual images so behind the mirror virtual images diminished sizes less diminished images formed virtual image behind mm -hmm. the mirror erect erect is there erect images are formed now regarding the size there can be variation it can be enlarged also enlarged image can also be obtained size variations can be there that depends how much object distance is present fine but for a convex mirror do not also emphasize so much into convex mirror usually you have concave mirrors in your examination questions but again, convex mirror is there in your syllabus. It's a part of your syllabus to revise it. But what I'm seeing in your previous year's questions, no, maximum questions are there from concave mirror part. So mark that as important and write somewhere concave mirror and make it a box and write it. That you remember, you have to focus on concave. Images formation can also be added. Yes, yes, correct. Images formation can be added in the exam. From theoretical point of view as well, and from your uh, ray diagram perspective as well, either to draw a ray diagram or simply a question can be asked: If the object is kept beyond C, where will the image will be formed? Where will the image be formed? So image will be formed between the center of curvature and the focus of the mirror, like this one. We have to answer. Fine. Okay. Yes, class. So noted down till here. Any doubts you have, let me know.
see class now uh, coming to one derivation the first derivation that you have is of the focal length and the radius of curvature there's a relation between the focus and the radius of curvature and derivation is very very easy derivation let me tell you relation between focus and radius of curvature Light rays, let's say these are incident. This is the incident ray. Now, class, when you have to drop a normal, so how will you draw? This is a curved surface. We were discussing yesterday when we were discussing the laws of reflection. We had discussed it on a plane surface. For example, this is a plane surface. Like this, dropping a perpendicular. This was what was a normal. But right now, this all these are curved parts. So how will you draw up a normal? So remember, the normal will always pass through the center of curvature. It means for drawing the normal, no, if you draw up a line passing through the center of curvature, this will be perpendicular to this mirror. This is a technique to draw up a normal and draw all the normals for it. So this, if this is the normal, then normal and incident is there. So this becomes angle of incidence. This is some random alpha I'm referring it, just a referral angle. This, is, this has no physical meaning. This has physical meaning, angle of incidence, but this has no meaning. This is a random angle. Now, if incident ray is, let's say, according to laws of reflection, following proper laws of reflection, it passes through the focus. Okay, let's name this point. Let's say this is some point B. This was A that was coming. Now C class, an angle of reflection is this angle between the normal and the reflected ray. This is the reflected. This derivation, uh, it has come a lot of times in your exam. So mark it as important, but it is very easy to remember. Now see how to remember it. See, angle of incidence is there, an angle of reflection is there. What is the relation between angle of incidence and angle of reflection? equal both are equal according to the laws of reflection you have both angle of incidence equal to the angle of reflection right angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection one more thing class can you see angle of incidence and this alpha can anyone tell me what is the relation between angle of incidence and this alpha they are also equal why they are equal they are equal. All good. Both are right. Rehan and Zed, both are right. Alternate angles. It's because this incident ray is parallel to your principal axis. So this BC is acting as a transverse. When this ray of light, you see this is acting as a transverse, alternate angles become equal. So angle of incidence was equal to angle of reflection. Now angle of incidence is equal to this alpha. So definitely we can say alpha and R are equal. A is equal to B, A is also equal to C. So B and C both are equal. Now class, if two angles in a triangle are equal, so what can you say about this triangle BCF? What type of triangle is this BCF? Two uh, angles are, uh, yes, there. Isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangle, yes. This is isosceles triangle. So a characteristic of isosceles triangle is opposite sides become equal. It means CF will now be equal to BF. Now C class one, just point this point B now that we have located and this pole of the mirror. These are very close to each other. So if you find FB or you write FP, both have the same meaning here because of the small aperture. The mirror's aperture is not much. The aperture is very small. So that's why if you locate the point B, you can replace it by the point P because both are very close to each other. So instead of writing FB, I can write it as FP. So if CF was equal to FP, then CF will be equal to FP. This was the entire radius of curvature. This was the entire focal length. Can you see focal length is exactly at the half of radius of curvature? So that is the relation that we want to establish. 
So C, again, repeating all the steps, angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection by the laws of reflection. Fine, by the laws of reflection, both are equal. And angle of incidence is equal to angle alpha by alternate angles. Therefore, we can say alpha and angle of incidence both are equal. Now you can say CB is equal to FB because of isosceles triangle property. Now, because of the small aperture of the mirror, you can also say this fact that the point B and the point P of the pole of the mirror, both are very close to each other. Small aperture of the mirror. So, both of these. BF is almost equal to BP. Both the lines are almost not BP. Because both the points are very close to each other. So, it means you can say this point that is present CB. Not CB, CF. C. So this line CF, this is almost equal to FB. Now FB is equal to FB, so we can say CF is equal to FB. FB. So this means. Now see your complete entire radius of curvature. This is formed by CF plus FP, right? So this entire radius of curvature, this has been formed by CF plus FP, gave radius of curvature. I can write it twice. I can write it as 2FP is equal to R. So I can write down that FP is equal to, not FP, is equal to radius of curvature divided by 2. Now your FP is what? This is the focal length only. So focus lies exactly at the center or mid of the radius of curvature. This is the relation that to remember and this derivation does come in your exam. So it's easy to remember. Orally also you can remember it, but writing down is important. So note it down.
Uh, Ma'am. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Ma'am, this uh, radius is uh, 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 this radius is half. Uh, for uh, sorry, the focus is half of its radius for only for convex, uh, only for concave mirror. Or... No, no, this is universal. This is for both the mirrors. This is applicable for both the mirrors. Even if you want to do the derivation for a convex mirror. That also you can do. Same steps will be there. It's just that there will be the change in the diagram. Like this, you will be having the convex. And the rays, not that I'm drawing properly. Uh, the incident ray is here. And now the rift, this will be the normal. That will pass through the center of curvature. This will be the reflected ray, angle of incidence, angle of reflection, like this you will do. All right, same steps. Just the diagram. Fine. Done class. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's start with then the mirror. Just the derivation we'll do because derivation is not very small. We'll do the derivation and we'll stop whatever time is left. Then we'll continue with the questions and answers in the next class. Now see mirror formula basically gives a relation between object distance, image distance and focus. Now, what is meant by all of these things? Let's say this is, I'm again using a concave mirror. You can use a convex mirror also in your exam. Also, if convex mirror as same things will be repeated. Center of curvature, focus, pole of the mirror. Object is, let's say this object is kept here beyond C. A, B, this is the, now see, there's this separation from the pole to the object. This is known as object distance, fine. This is known as object distance. And since this is in front of the mirror, that's why we use it as and make it as negative. 
Now the light rays will strike. Pass through the center of curvature. Fine. Uh, one more we need in this just for this. Though this is enough sufficient for drawing it, but we'll use the third one also that we have studied. No, third one also. We Now here the image will be obtained. A dash, B dash. Now separation of the image from the pole. This separation is known as image distance, V. Listen, this is also formed in front of the mirror. We are writing it as negative. This separation, this is your focus. This is focal length. This complete is your radius of curvature. This complete is object distance. Fine. Everything is in front of the mirror. So I'm taking everything as negative. Now let's start with the derivation. Okay, okay, before one thing, let, let me just mark it here, some points. Uh, let's say this point is some point M because this ha it has no point over here. This is A dash, this is B dash, C, F, everything is over here. Now C class, if you look at this triangle, A dash, B dash and C. This triangle, if you look, fine, this triangle. And if you look at this triangle, A, B, C. Can you see both these angles are vertically opposite angles and this is the common side base, same base sides. It means using S, A angle, some property you have for triangle. Both the triangles are similar. So triangle A, B, C is similar to triangle A dash, B dash, C. This triangle and this triangle, fine. If two triangles are similar, using your basic mathematics, you must be aware of this. How do we write it? We can write it as A dash B, A dash B dash divided by AB. And here congruency and similarity of triangles will be used a lot in this lesson. This will be equal to CB dash by BC. Like this we write it. Also, if you see CB dash, CB dash, and BC. So CB dash is this. CB dash can be written as what? In this entire CP, if you subtract B dash P, you will obtain this small portion. Similarly, for BC dash, for this BC, if you take this entire BP and subtract BC, you will obtain this small portion. So same thing here I am doing. For this, for this CB dash, I'm from this entire CP, I am subtracting B dash P. And for BC, from the entire BP, I am subtracting CP. Now, why did I do all these things? Now, see what is meant by CP. CP is what? If you notice, CP, B dash P, BP, all these things are what? C, CP. This is C, this is P. Radius of curvature, right? CP is minus R then. Then what did we have? We had B dash P. So B dash P, this point, this point. Image distance minus P. BP, complete object distance, that is minus U. These were all the things that were required by us. So CP. Uh, CP was minus R, B dash P was minus P, and BP was minus U. Let's put it. So minus R is there, CP. Now this minus sign, and what is B dash P? B dash P is minus U divided by. BP is what? Minus U. Then this minus sign. CP is what? Minus R. How can I write it? Minus R plus V by minus U plus R. Till here, this is A dash, B dash by A. Also, one more thing if you notice. Uh, if I just write it till here, no, A dash, B dash. Just look at these two triangles, some two triangles. 
just look at these a dash b dash p this a dash b dash p this triangle and look at the bigger triangle a b p that's why we drew these two lines as well these were not needed this triangle and this triangle both have this angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection and this is the common side so again using s a similarity both the triangles are similar so now also i can say in triangle a it was a dash b dash p similar to a b p both are similar so if both these triangles are similar i can again write it as a dash b dash by a b is equal to b dash p by b p fine now see b dash p we already know this was minus c b p was minus u this can be written as b by u do you notice a dash b dash by a b is equal to b by u also just now we did calculate a dash b dash b was equal to minus r minus plus v by minus u by plus r so it means we can equate both these so it means minus r plus u by minus v plus r can be written as v by u so uh, now this is a dash b dash right yes mm hmm a dash b dash by ab yes yes a dash b dash by ab so both were equal so now let's just cross multiply it this becomes minus ur plus uv is equal to minus uv plus vr so uv uv let's bring it together so that becomes vr plus ur let's bring this together so that becomes 2 uv now let's do one thing in order to obtain the main equation no let's divide it by uvr everywhere divide by uvr so see equation was vr plus ur is equal to 2 uv now we are dividing it by uvr divided by uvr divided by uvr yes. now see vr vr cancels ur ur cancels uv uv cancels what are we left with here we have 1 by u plus here we are left with 1 by v here we are left with 2 by r remember just now we calculated that r by 2 was f So r by 2 was f so it means 2 by r is 1 by f keep it here you obtain 1 by f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v this is the mirror formula and you have to use sign convention when you ever you are solving this you have to use appropriate sign conventions and f is your focal length everything has been written earlier only this is the derivation for the mirror formula. numericals we'll practice in the next class till the time just quickly copy all these part
all those who have completed, you all can leave. We'll continue with this on, uh, the next class. Now, C class, you have your next class on Friday now. This for the next weekend. No, we'll be having the class on Friday and Saturday because on Sunday I'm not available. So that's why Sunday's class I'm taking it on Friday. So instead of having it on Saturday and Sunday, we'll have the class on Friday, Saturday, same timings. Everything will remain the same. Fine, just for this weekend, not for the entire duration. All right. And one more thing also. EM waves test will be there on next Sunday, uh, on next Saturday. Fine. EM waves test. We didn't have any test of EM waves. No? EM waves has been completed yesterday only. So EM waves test is there. If you tell me, are you comfortable to give it on Friday or Saturday? Because both the days are fine for me. You tell me. Especially students who were there. Astha, Ahmed, Jeeva. Saturday, no? Okay. And I think Saturday will be fine. So we will get the reminders on Friday as well. It's just that I am telling you. So have your vacancy. We do not have any commitment for Friday. It's fine. So all those who have completed, you all can leave. Let's meet on Friday. Thank you so much, class. Ma'am, Friday, what time is? Same, same thing. Same thing. Just the Sunday's class rescheduled to Friday. Same time. Ma'am, me... I have another tuition on Friday from the same time. Same time you have it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what's the timing for you? See, for here, we start the class at 6.30. So, when do you get free from your tuitions? I can postpone it. It's not an issue. I can prepone it and postpone it for Friday. Timings tell me, Asta. Preferable timings then? Uh, Ma'am, it's 4, 4 to 6. Here is 4 to 6. Oh, my times. 4 to 6, you have the class. So after 6, we can have it? After 6, can we have it? Same timings you have it? No. Like for my 6.30 to 8.30, you have it 4 to 6. Right, Asta? Yeah, this is what you're saying, no? Yes, ma'am, the general timings are uh, 5 to 6, 30, 5 to 7, like uh, your timings. Okay, okay. For uh, Uman's time. Okay, okay. So just tell me after your tuition class, if it is possible for you, after your tuition class that you have, after it, I'll take it. I can take it here because it's online. No, you don't have to travel here. So we can have it after 8.30 also. We can have it at 9. So 9 means, here 9 means what? 7 30 of yours yes so that is fine yes ma'am. okay i think by the you have your class online or it's offline there online online class here see so i think nine o'clock here and for you what did you say 7 30 no so 7 30 will be fine Okay, then I'll just share the time. Okay, thank you so much. Hello, ma'am. Yes, am I audible? Terry McBall, right? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Okay, so you are from class 11. No, you're in class 11 right now? Yes, I'm in class 11. So how much portion has been covered in your school, Terry? Ma'am, in my school, they're actually on uh, the gravitation right now. Okay, gravitation, right. Fine, Terry. See, the, currently in your batch, no, we have been doing work energy and power. We are almost towards the end of work energy and power. Okay. So let me brief you with the lesson what we did so that when you join the batch, you can at least have an idea of what is going through. See, power we had started, work done was already over. So let me just brief you with what work done is there. 
in your lesson this is chapter number 6 of your ncert so you have work energy and power basically work done is the dot product of force and displacement so force multiplied by displacement gives you work done that you have to remember and dot product are you clear with dot products and cross products theory ma'am actually i joined like the school last month cuz i was preparing from uh, for amu but then i joined school here and so i have to cover the previous syllabus okay 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 your backups are there you backups so currently you are at which place india me you be or fir you are abroad you are i'm actually in dubai right okay you are in dubai right so i think 1.5 hours difference no it's there from indian time is no yes. so what chapters are you through with horror with any chapter or you have to do it from the starting because i want to do it from the start because like i have tried studying but i still have many doubts okay okay see uh here in this batch no currently we are on chapter number 6 so when you will join we'll see you will just have to wait for some time i think for half an hour or one hour or just one class for which we could complete this lesson and after this we'll start freshly from the next lesson that is rotation so from rotation you will be able to understand it completely in your batches the students who are there already in your batch that you can do from and regarding the rest of the topics we can have backup slowly for all those this is one thing that we can do fine yeah like uh, the lessons that have already been covered we can have backup classes slowly like, like let's say on fridays whenever you have holidays there whenever i am available whenever you are available some other students must also be needing some backup they must be needing their revision classes as well so for motion in a straight line dimension analysis certain lessons we can do one thing we can plan revision classes and the backup classes for it so regarding the upcoming chapters work done work energy and power will be only one topic is left that is collision so collision is also a new topic so when you'll join the class tomorrow no in your class is tomorrow only monday wednesday we have it so when you'll join the class tomorrow tomorrow we'll start with collision so collision is also a completely entire different topic that you will be able to understand so once you've understood collision rotation from that you can carry on if ever you're not able to understand any previous part like i'll give you the backup and i'll share the video lectures for you for calculus differentiation integration dot products cross products all these points so i'll share the video lectures also with you so that meanwhile some portions you can complete it from the video lectures some portions you can complete it within me with me got okay, it so ma'am will be able to complete it fast cuz there's a lot of backlog so in school it's tough to understand like what is going on you know okay so currently uh, in your school you are on gravitation so when are you having your tests and half yearlies yes ma'am it's after two weeks after two weeks you have your exam so what is the syllabus for it very mm-hmm. um it's still mechanical properties of solids mechanical properties of solids okay so see for the backup classes no i suggest you if to continue in the batch only because even the when you will be there in the batch otherwise if we'll just be focusing on these classes backup classes then whatever things are there going in the batches that will be missed by you so i think what we can do is uh, we can stick on this some things like dimension analysis this is a very easy topic so that i can share the video lecture with you two lectures yes, lectures they are there that you can see motion in a straight line we can do together projectile yes. motion is a very small topic okay. then laws of motion also same thing like friction force is an important topic that we can have it together things like newton's laws that you can see from the video lecture this is one thing that we can do or what do you suggest say terry mom like i know i need to take like what am uh, what i'm studying right now in the class and what i've missed together so i don't have more backlog so yeah it's fine if you do it your own okay otherwise you can have that one to one classes i let you that will be going according to you only fine if you are not comfortable in the batch you can have a proper one to one class only that will go just whatever you want to study that also you can do if you are comfortable how many classes do we have in a week uh you have two classes a week for the batch that i am currently taking it is on monday and wednesday 
and indian ist timings are 7:30 7:30 1.5 hours duration is there right now now slowly we'll increase the duration because we are we also have to hurry up with the syllabus by end of december and first week of jan we have to complete with the syllabus so in that batch we are um, having 1.5 hours classes from 7:30 ist so i think for you it will be what 6 o'clock Yes. Six no to six. So for you it will be six to seven thirty. IST it's seven thirty to nine pm. So one point five hours classes there. Two two days. One thing you can do is if you're not comfortable with the space of the batch, you can have one to one classes as well. One to one it means just you and the teacher. That also can be done, or that can be done if you uh, want to go whatever is missed and whatever going is whatever is going in your school. Otherwise, whatever is going in the batch that I have also told. So let me know, Terim, accordingly. I'll plan things for you. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. So do you want to study something today, or you just wanted to have an interaction? Mom, I'm fine either way. Like it's on you. Okay, you're fine either way. So see, let me just introduce you what with what we did. Rest of the things, what you can do, you can, I'll let you know. I think time is also, much time is also not left. Five minutes, let me just brief you with the syllabus and the things that we have covered. So worked and we did. Worked and was simply the dot product of force and displacement. It means force, whenever force is produced, and displacement should occur. It means an object from an initial position to a final position, it should cover some displacement. That is referred to as work done. So force into displacement. Scale, it's a scalar quantity. Are you clear with scalar and vector quantities? Yes, ma'am, I know scalar and vector quantities. Okay. So work done is also a scalar quantity. It means it has no direction. So you don't need to apply any vector laws uh, vector laws, I think you must not be doing, knowing it in detail. No parallelograms law, all these things have to be revised. Yes, yes. I'll, I think uh, you must be needing those one-to-one -one classes only because in the batch, we are ahead. We are quite ahead. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. I think for you, if the, it is available for you and if you are preferable, preferring that, then I'll arrange that. Fine, Perry. Yeah, okay. Because here we are dot product, cross product, vector addition, vector subtraction, all these things have been done. Otherwise, that backup thing, otherwise, one-to-one -one classes are not 